I am standing at the end of the bed in what feels like an awfully long silence, but it is a peaceful one, like a part of me had died. I stare at the first corpse, sprawled like a starfish on the bed. Her clothes had tinges of red spread across them. Her empty green eyes were now fixated by the ceiling, and her mouth gaped open, the blood still bubbling inside. Besides her lies me, the other me, the me that was and will never be again. It took a while to replicate my injuries, rather crude job but necessary. It had to look real, they had to believe it. It felt strange to see my burnt skin, jet black hair and the carved wide looking smile that so many had become familiar with, the last thing they would have seen before I brought my blade down upon their throat. The years floated back then, good times, fond memories, replaced by the bitterness of one single fact. They didn't fear me anymore. I was perceived by my victims not as their psychotic mass murderer, but as a warm, friendly, lovable guy. I had to hold back the bile building in my aching throat, the flesh so sensitive, so delicately fragile, like a fine cloth in my hand whenever I rub my arms now, though the skin feels like burnt plastic, peeling and tearing, flaking bits of black and pink falling to the ground. I had become desensitised to the pain it brought. The scene before me was like a painting, the girl frozen, fixed in terror, and the other me with that sickening smile, lying close to her paling corpse. I had placed my knife between them, soaked in her blood. The beauty of this was in the setup. I had drugged them both, and positioned them in a way that upon waking would cause an immediate struggle. As I expected, he got the upper hand quite quickly, and despite her biting his arm, which looked quite agonising in itself, he still found the strength to drive the knife so conveniently placed on the bed into her chest. Her cries were music to my ears. I savoured this, feeling a degree of power. The moment of realisation of what he did hit him hard. The whimpering caused my itch. I wasted no time sneaking in behind him and wrapping the garrote wire around his throat, watching him gasp for every breath. He spasms and his head arcs back. I expected this and moved back. He soon came to rest. I laid him gently onto the bed and set to work with the next stage of the plan. Carefully with the acid, I began replicating the damaged look of my worn skin. I then carved my signature smile into his face and positioned his body next to hers. I didn't have much time. I had an appointment to make. I left the apartment room feeling more alive than I had ever felt before. It was a strange feeling, like a great burden rising off my shoulders. The act of killing had become such a chore, but this, this tickled my itch like never before. I left the complex and found my car sitting in the car park. Aware of the time ticking away, I drove into the night.